everyone. So we are back with our discussion on abnormal uterine bleeding. Primarily, it causes the palm coin classification. So we have already discussed about polyps, adenomyosis, leomyoma, that is uterine fibroids, and started with the discussion on one of the commonly encountered gynecological cancer, that is endometrial cancer. As I already said in my previous video, covering the topic of gynecologic malignancies is next to impossible in one single video. So we shall be going step by step. So in the previous video, we started our discussion on endometrial cancer, where we discussed about the risk factors, causes, signs and symptoms, and also the investigations done. This video is the continuation of our previous video where we shall be discussing about the types of endometrial cancer based on uh, the histology, staging of endometrial cancer and its treatment. So if you have not watched the previous videos, I would like to request you all to also consider watching the previous videos on endometrial cancer and all the other videos in series sequence to get a better understanding about the topic. So here we begin with our discussion on types of endometrial cancer based on histology. Uh, we have type 1 and type 2. So understanding the type will primarily help us in uh, knowing about the prognosis of the cancer, which will ultimately help us in deciding the line of treatment. So let us uh, discuss about type 1. Uh, the most commonly seen histological type is the endometrioid adenocarcinoma. This is the most commonly seen where we can see it is seen in 80% of the cases. Uh, we also have other types such as mucinous type, clear cell type, serous type, squamous type, which is very, very rarely seen. So the most commonly seen is the endometrioid adenocarcinoma. And this is commonly seen in obese women. Okay, so 80% of cases are seen, which is the endometrioid adenocarcinoma and seen in obese women. Proceeding with type 1 endometrial cancer. Now, this develops on the background of endometrial hyperplasia. We have discussed about endometrial hyperplasia being one of the risk factors and the cause of endometrial cancer we have talked that endometrial hyperplasia is or you know acts as a precursor for the development of endometrial cancer so this endometrioid adenocarcinoma develops on the background of endometrial hyperplasia it is very commonly seen in pre and perimenopausal women it has a good prognosis and is well differentiated. Now, good prognosis because it is usually picked up at an early stage, like we have seen in pre and perimenopausal women, not in an elderly, like, you know, after 70s and 80s, uh, that age group women. It is usually seen in pre and perimenopausal women, uh, picked up at an early stage, so has a good prognosis. Okay, so it is usually identified. This type 1 type of endometrial cancer is usually identified before it becomes more aggressive and metastatic or difficult to treat. So it has a good prognosis. And the other uh, thing is it is estrogen dependent. Okay. Now coming to the type 2 of endometrial cancer. Now let us do a comparative study. Okay. So, in type 1, we saw that it was endometrioid adenocarcinoma. Here, it is serous or clear cell type of histology. We have discussed that there are different types of histology that can be seen, endometrioid, adenocarcinoma, mucinous, serous, clear cell. So, in type 2, we have serous or clear cell histology. It is very commonly seen in lean and thin women. There, in Type 1, it was seen in obese women. So, in type 2 histology, it is seen in lean and thin women. It is non-estrogen dependent. Type 1 was estrogen dependent and type 2 was non-estrogen dependent. Seen in post-menopausal women, after menopause. And there in type 1, it was primarily seen in pre and perimenopausal women before menopause or uh, you know 
women who are you know in the process of uh, going towards menopause but here in type 2 it is seen in post menopausal women type 2 endometrial cancer develops on the background of atrophic endometrium now going back to type 1 when we compare this to type 1 Type one endometrial cancer develops on the background of endometrial hyperplasia. Here, type two develops on the background of atrophic endometrium. And one very important point to remember is, type two endometrial cancer has bad prognosis. Okay, type one had good prognosis because it was diagnosed at an early stage in pre and perimenopausal women. type 2 has bad prognosis because it is advanced it is diagnosed at a later stage where the cancer would have been more uh, aggressive and advanced and also we have seen in post menopausal commonly seen in post menopausal women so it has a bad prognosis now let us proceed with the staging of endometrial cancer so in stage 1 where the tumor is limited to the corpus uteri that means tumor is limited to the body of the uterus this is the body this is the cervix vagina so tumor is simply limited to the body of the uterus so in stage 1a less than 50% of myometrium is involved so here we can see the tumor suppose have begun here okay endometrial cancer so it is less than 50% of myometrium has involved in stage 1b more than or equal to 50% of myometrium is involved so this cancer has further spread you can see more than and further went deep into the myometrium so more than 50% it has it has spread to full thickness of the myometrium so more than or equal to 50% of the myometrium is involved so this is stage 1b stage 1a less than 50% of the myometrium involved stage 1b more than or equal to 50% of the myometrium involved myometrium is nothing but the musculature the muscular wall of the uterus all right now stage 2 so stage 1 remember this is we can say the gist of stage 1 uh tumor that is tumor is limited to simply to the body of the uterus now when we come to stage 2 two we can see invasion of cervical stroma okay invasion of cervical stroma but no extension beyond uterus okay there is invasion of now with through direct spread okay this tumor will spread to the cervix invasion of cervical stroma but the tumor again is confined only to in inside the you know uh uterus it is there is no extension it is not going beyond the uterus it is not uh, breaching the serosa and going outside into the pelvic cavity let us now go through the stage 3 of endometrial cancer so this is the gist of stage 3 where there is local and or regional spread of the cancer so in stage 1 what was the gist that the cancer was restricted to the uterus itself there was no spread so stage 1a less than 50% of the myometrial involvement stage 1b more than or equal to 50% of myometrial involvement in stage 2 there was involvement of cervical stroma through direct extension so in stage 1 and 2 the tumor or the cancer was confined to the uterus but never left or never breached the serosa and you know it got uh, it got uh, spread to the outside of the uterus now in stage 3 there is spreading of the cancer to the regional or to the adjacent structures this is the advanced stage from now on stage 3 and stage 4 are the advanced stage of cancer so in stage 3 we have stage 3a where there is invasion of the serosa of the corpus uteri and or adnexae that means 
spread of the cancer to the adnexa. Adnexa is the fallopian tubes, ovaries, and these are adjacent structures. So this serosa is breached, and the cancer is now spreading to the fallopian tubes and ovaries. So this is A. A for you can take it as a mnemonic above. Stage 3A. Stage 3B, we have spread to the vagina and parametrium. Now, through direct, direct extension again, spreading to the vagina and parametrium. Again, reaching the serosa and spreading to the parametrium. So, this is B, B for below. So, 3A above, we have spreading to the adnexa, that is fallopian tubes, ovary and all these adjacent structures here. And B for below, stage 3B, we have spreading of the cancer to vagina and parametrium. Now coming to stage 3C where there is metastasis to pelvic and para-aortic lymph nodes. So these are the para-aortic lymph nodes. These are the pelvic lymph nodes. So we can see in stage 3C the cancer is now spreading to the lymph nodes. Which lymph nodes? The para-aortic and the pelvic lymph nodes okay now let us go through stage 4 of endometrial cancer so stage 4 in stage 4 we have invasion of bladder and or bowel mucosa so the cancer is now spreading to the adjacent organs the organs that lie in close proximity to uterus are urinary bladder and rectum in front of the uterus we have bladder urinary bladder and behind the uterus we have rectum cancer is now affecting these adjacent organs as well so in 4a we have invasion of bladder and or bowel mucosa along with distant meds now let us make a quick revision 1a less than 50 percent of myometrial involvement 1b more than 50 percent or equal to 50 percent of myometrial involvement stage 2 cervical stromal involvement stage 3a spreading of the cancer to the adnexa okay you you know breaching the serosa and spreading of the cancer to the adnexa fallopian tubes ovaries stage 3b spreading of the cancer to vagina and parametrium okay again and stage 3c spreading of the cancer metastasis to para aortic and pelvic lymph nodes now coming to stage 4 a invasion of bladder or bowel mucosa and stage 4b there is distant metastasis including intra abdominal metastasis and or inguinal lymph nodes now there is metastasis to the inguinal lymph nodes as well through lymphatic spread okay so this is in totality okay this was in totality the so, uh, staging of endometrial cancer stage one and two the cancer was confined to the uterus stage three and four the advanced stage where cancer breached the serosa and started affecting the adjacent organs and structures as well okay now let us go through the treatment of endometrial cancer so the standard treatment offered especially for elderly women or women in the peri or uh, premenopausal or postmenopausal age is total abdominal hysterectomy with bilateral salpingo oophorectomy which means removal of surgical removal of uterus along with both fallopian tubes and ovaries now followed by uh, total abdominal hysterectomy and bilateral salpingo oophorectomy whether to go with radiation chemotherapy okay that is heavily dependent on the uh, surgical staging and histopathological report of the case okay so the standard treatment primary treatment offered is total abdominal hysterectomy with bilateral salpingo oophorectomy so guys next on the list is one of the most commonly encountered gynecologic cancer that is cervical cancer so do not forget to subscribe to your health oasis and stay tuned and follow me on Instagram for more 
such discussions on health-related topics. Thank you.